Welcome to the Halloween themed episodes of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. I will be your host, the One White Guy. <laughs> I mean, that's man, that, right. That's that's uh, we're we're pretending we're bring, to be each other. That's right. We're taking Halloween back. <laughs> Nathan is in full white face in front of me. Oh no. <laughs> And I have a sombrero on. <laughs> Cancelled. <laughs> Welcome, We're everyone. We're both dressed up as <laughs> right now. Oh, God. That's being cut for sure. <laughs> I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. These are the Halloween episodes. We will be releasing them around September, October time. So whenever you're hearing this, I bet you it's those months. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, general nonsense, and now... The spooky, the spooky, and quite frankly, the boring. This is a this is a fun time for us. We're very excited to be talking about Amityville. Well, the original Amityville horror, starring Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yo, <laughs> and Melissa George. That was her name. That's that, her name. Is that the two thousand five cast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah the remake two thousand five, produced by the greatest director of all time, Michael. Bay. Oh my goodness! I'm surprised the house didn't blow up at the end. No, I, it did. It did. I don't even. I don't think I've seen the whole one. Oh no, I lied. I haven't seen it either. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen clips of this movie. Have you ever found a portal to hell in any house you've lived in that could or could not be filled with black goo? Well, where you stored your hockey gear when we were living in Daly City, that. That was probably the closest. The, that that Harry remember. Potter closet that underneath was probably, the stairs. That was probably the closest we ever got to the oh, portal no, to there, hell. Oh, no, there it was. I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> my own eyes. It was a portal to hell. We, we make a joke about this, uh, uh, listeners, but I'll tell you what. There is a portal to hell in every single one of these movies, and it gets progressively different or changes or bigger or starts moving around the house but there's always one in every single movie <laughs> why is it there nobody quite knows why does it migrate nobody that's why quite i just knows said either. yeah I, don't, I have no comment that's nobody, right you're right <laughs> nobody quite nobody quite knows while it's there the amityville horror released in 1979 directed by Stuart rosenberg starring james brolin as george lutz rod steger as father delaney and Lois Lane from Superman 1 and 2 as Kathy Lutz. <laughs> A.K.A. Margot Kidder. Margot Kidder, May yeah. she rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. What's her name? She's in Black Christmas, too. Oh, Remember? yeah, yeah. She, is. she is. She's the drunk. She's the drunk. She's the drunk sister. <laughs> yeah, the drunk sister. But I forget the uh, character's name in the original Black Christmas. She popped up in Halloween 2, the Rob Zombie one. Yeah, she's she like... Uh, uh, she's Laurie's uh, shrink in that movie. Yeah, she's like a... <laughs> On to the IMDb summary of the Amityville Horror. Newlyweds and their three children move into a large house where a mass murder was committed. They start to experience strange, inexplicable manifestations which have strong effects on everybody living in or visiting the house. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Uh, at least there's unlike no... Unlike the movie. Unlike the movie. Uh, <laughs> they, they really get to like kind of... To be honest, you don't even need to watch the movie. You could just kind of guess what happens by the IMDb summary. I would say point. read the book. When we were watching the end of this movie together, you brought up the idea that I think this might make more sense in the book. If it is an adaptation of the book, if it adapts a lot of things from the book, it does not do it well. No. Because it, this movie makes little no sense. It's not that it doesn't make sense. It just seems like every single thing that happens in the movie is kind of just disconnected. From everything's kind of like an isolated event and then they move it's on. It's very episodic. Yeah, it, it feels just, yeah. It feels like small things just keep happening and then they kind of forget about it until the next thing happens. Yeah. Scenes just end. They just stop. It's just like like Brolin will just smack Margot Kidder for no reason because he's like, oh, it's so cold in here. And like, oh, we should leave. And he's like, no, this is my house. Just backhands her. She runs away crying. He starts putting more firewood in the fireplace. We'll next, cut to the next, next day. Next scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just no. It's just like tension. It's just, it's just uh, domestic violence. The movie uh, at points, unfortunately. Yeah, he starts going crazy from day two. He starts going crazy like almost immediately. And there is no progression. I wouldn't even call this movie a slow burn. This movie's just slow. This movie's slow. It doesn't really. Be, it's supposed to build up to like a grand like you know, thing at the end when, you know, they all want to leave, but it doesn't feel like it's earned even by the end of it because it took so long to get there. 
And and in the end, it makes no sense. In case you haven't realized, we're not very big fans of this movie. I feel like we could take a second now that we've kind of given our opinions on the movie before we get into, you know, first experience and everything about the little bit of the history of this actual why the Amityville Horror is a movie and why it was a kind of an American horror story within not not a tagline into that TV show. But (laughs) I'm surprised they haven't done that. Yeah, yeah, they, they I'm surprised they haven't done it either. I think maybe they feel like it's been picked over too many times. And they're like, we'll not do that. Oh, well, we, made, we gave them that idea. Uh, the, yeah. the, the, the 400 sequels. Different sequels. Yeah. The 400 Amityville movies that are out there. The, the Amityville, Amityville Shark. I swear, that's real. I, you know what? We're going to skip over that. We'll get to that at the end. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the real story behind the Amityville horror, uh, it centers around the DeFeo family, who is an Italian-American family living in in Long Island on, at, in Amityville, uh, specifically around one family member, uh, Ronald DeFeo. He was the oldest son, right? Oldest son. And uh, in the middle of the night on November 13th, 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr., the eldest son, took a lever action rifle and shot all of his family members in their beds to death. He murdered every single one of them. That's six people total. Uh, his parents, his siblings... Uh, and then ran to a local bar and said that his family had been murdered and somebody did it. And after it was investigated, it was he admitted to him being the one to do it. And the reason he said he did it is because the voices told him to. Obviously, that's the that's the story. Anyway, it was a horrible tragedy. It was like what do you, one of, what, what, what do you say when you get you know arrested for murder for six murders? Uh, probably something along those lines. They recreate this at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, they, they and they cut back to it very jarringly at the beginning when George and Kathy are looking at the house. When Brolin and Margot Kidder are walking through the house, it just cuts randomly. They'll go, they'll look in a room and they'll say, "And this is the master bedroom." Smash cut to just like the parents getting shot in the bed. Yeah, it's just like I don't know if this is in poor taste, but back then I don't think they cared very much because yeah. this shit really happened. Yeah, it did. The movie came out about five years. Five years after the mm-hmm. actual events yeah. of the um, the murder, the but, specific murder, the real life murder that mm-hmm. had happened. So five years later. But to finish up with that, he was arrested. He went to jail. He was in prison for life because of insanity and all that. But it was a great American tragedy. It blew up in the news because it was just such an act of extreme violence that they weren't quite used to yet, uh, but would become normalized in modern day <laughs> we wouldn't even be like yeah same shit as always i'm surprised it wasn't a school this time we hear about this <laughs> yeah we heard about this and we're just like uh, first time huh yeah first time first time but back then it was a it was a big deal and uh eventually the later occupants which are real names are george and kathy lutz moved in and there was a reported amount of uh spooky par- spooky paranormal activity yeah, at the house. And we will get to that, all those stories, a little bit later. But this story revolves around the George and Kathy Lutz moving into the house after the murders had been committed and experiencing these uh, paranormal this, events. This horror, if you will, <laughs> in a place called Amityville. Are you just trying to make a joke about the title and then also <laughs> just, just making it longer? Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> let, me, let me start with asking you when you first saw this. Uh, the first time I saw the Amityville Horror was probably when I was in high school, when I was watching a bunch of, uh, you know, just trying to catch up on all the horror movies that I should have seen, because that's when I started really liking horror movies. And, you know, I was going through, like, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday, the Friday the 13th movies and other, you know, slashers. We'd done, you know, Exorcist, you know, in the grander scheme. And they, everyone, one of the recommendations was, like, you got to watch the original Amityville Horror. And I feel like in high school, it was just okay and forgettable and i kind of forgot everything about it until we rewatched it over the uh, pandemic the pandemic and that was pretty much the last time i watched it before doing it for this podcast okay so total three times i've seen it also total three times the first time i watched it i was out of college i had i made like a list of horror movies to watch for one halloween because there were so many i hadn't seen yet amityville horror was at the top of the list and so i was watching it i my thoughts about it were about the same as they were watching it for this is that this movie doesn't make a lot of sense is it well made yeah does it have some good scares oh yes i was legitimately creeped out by the movie i thought there were at least two moments that legit got me 
as an adult watching it for the first time that that actually like made me like look over my shoulder and go, oh Jesus, am I am I watching this by myself? Oh, okay. Maybe I should turn the lights on. Some of the effects are really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially the end of the movie when it, you know, it's the least boring. Yeah. <laughs> when things happen. When actually things happen. <laughs> even then, you know, not everything just makes sense. This movie doesn't... The things happen in this movie and they don't mean anything. It just kind of feels like a fever dream you're watching where you're just, okay, on to the next thing. Something happens and then on to the next thing. We're not going to analyze this. We're not going to try to, you know break down what just happened. It's not going to feed into the story. This movie's fairly storyless. Yeah. It's just this couple is slowly being driven a little to a lot insane by living in this shithole. <laughs> yeah. In, in this haunted <laughs> shithole house. From both our POVs, we just were pretty underwhelmed by it. Would you say that? Yeah. This movie kind of... I feel like if there was no other movies about a bunch of white people moving into a house they know they shouldn't be in and shit going wrong and them staying despite it, this would be like the standout. This kind of, this wasn't the first movie to do this, but this was a movie that kind of really just consistently made that trope of white people staying in a house they know they shouldn't be in. Because this isn't like Exorcist, right? This isn't like Exorcist where nothing was wrong with the house and then... A girl got it was that little bitch. A little girl got possessed completely because of a item, right? Like it was, it was brought into the house. The house was fine. This is this is where oh, Captain Howdy. This is the house where something is clearly wrong with it, and yet, despite all of the obvious signs that should be viewed and taken as a warning, white people are like, oh, "I think everything's okay." I'll tell you what. This this would this would not have happened to to Latinos or, or, or like a family like people of color like they would have been like man fuck this we're out of here how many people are killed here El Diablo <laughs> how many how many people are killed in this house we aren't fucking living here all right keep so- keep shopping <laughs> yeah yeah yep. new house new house new time meanwhile the white family shows up and he's Whoa, going, I'll take what's, it what's going on in there <laughs> yeah it's 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 a fun trope to make fun of yeah because it, it's so obvious i think the worst has to be what i've heard i haven't seen this but i think the worst people told me is the haunting in connecticut oh when it's so obviously it's so issue, obviously yeah. you guys need to leave but they don't leave yeah yeah this is this is that same this is that same thing at least the, at least in this the the let's is apparently learned by the end of the movie yeah it only took him about two weeks or so it took him it took him like a month i think wasn't it yeah because george okay so should we, to get into yeah. the plot, yeah, let's get into the movie. As as thin as it is, it shows that Ronald DeFale Jr. killed his family, and a year later, Margot Kidder and James Brolin are looking at the house. This real estate agent is showing them the house, who looks like Phyllis from The Office, by the way. Yeah, and she she's showing them the house. And- oh, you know who she's played by? Ooh. She's played by the woman who is the same as the slave of the clock tower. She's the save the clock tower lady in Back to the Future Part One. No shit. Yeah, it is. I, I recognized her. Oh, I was nice. like, she's, she's a save, she's a realtor, and she's also the save the clock tower, save the clock tower lady in nice. Back to the Future Part One. They see the house. Margot Kidder's like, I don't know about this. Because all these people died. And I was like, I was right, like right there. All right, so you idiots know people have died here. Yeah, they have to disclose it. Like, <laughs> you know people have died here. But it was funny because watching the real estate lady just kind of like tell, show them around. I was like, she's trying her damnedest not to like hint that, that something happened here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I was I, like, are they, are, do they, do they know? But they do know. They, they are aware that six people were murdered in the house. Um, at least it's that. It's never, and I want to say this, it's never implicitly said that it's the DeFeo family. Uh, they did that to avoid any issues because. Oh, they don't. There's they no, don't I thought there was text at the beginning. They, they don't say it. They, they don't say who it is. They don't say it was the DeFeo family because probably to avoid slander or any, uh, any any okay. any any libel or I don't know. Fucking it's terms. pretty close, though. Well, they, it's, they, it's the fucking story. Yeah. <laughs> Brolin really wants the house. He's like he's adamant that they get the house. So James Brolin, who plays George, Lutz, he plays George, who needs a haircut for the whole a, movie. He does look like Bob Ross. He, uh, he looks no, he looks like crackhead Bob Ross. Cra- well, that's later. He starts to look worse in the later in the movie. From day two, he starts yeah. to look worse. He starts to look like he's going through some kind of uh, withdrawal. Withdrawal. He does look good. Yeah. Like, one thing I'll give this movie is the performances are very good. Like, yeah. they're both great in the movie. And yeah. he... They both have really great scared faces when shit mm-hmm. goes down. They do make Brolin look really cracked out. Like, yeah. he's just sweaty and pale for most of this movie. Yeah. And Margot Kidder, like, 
there's a reason she she was in this after Black Christmas. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So she's great, too. Even though years later she called the movie a piece of garbage. That's a we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that later. But they they move that they move in and Margot Kidder so they're newly married and Margot Kidder comes with three kids. Yeah. Like from a previous marriage. So he is a stepdad. They got a dog, Harry. What happens next? It's just stuff just starts to happen. Weird they, stuff just starts to happen. Uh, oh, based, Rod, yeah, Rod Steiger comes over. Rod Steiger, who's the uh, father Delaney, comes over. Uh, I think it's like they've been in the house like two days at most. Two days. They're unpacking and they decide to take a break and watch the kids play in the backyard because the house is on some water and they're just like playing around, you know, running around the water and stuff. Yeah, they're watching. They're They're playing with the kids and he comes over. Because I guess they're from around there. They know who he is. He's there to bless the house. Yeah, get everything going. You know, set the things off on a positive note. He walks in and he may, he's just like, okay, well, they're outside. I'll just, you know, get started. He goes up to like, what, the attic? The attic. The attic. The, like the third the third floor. With the two with, evil with, eyes. With the windows. two evil windows. Did they intentionally make the house look like a skull? Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be like that. It obviously. Looks, yeah, it's 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 a, it's an iconic looking house. Yeah, the, you uh, know it as soon as you see it. The current owners of the house, I can say this because it's not in the fact section, have actually changed the windows, so they're not like that anymore. They're just regular squares. Cause yeah, they're really tired <laughs> of people being like, "It's haunted, it's evil." Oh they're my like, god, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Change the windows. <laughs> That is get tourists coming in all the time. Those, but yeah, that must suck to live there. Well, it's like the same lady that owns that house from Breaking Bad, where people just throw on pizzas on top of the house, free pizza to, to try to emulate what she's complaining Walter about. White. <laughs> <laughs> Stop going to my house, Father Delaney, and he is there to bless the house. He goes up to the third floor and he's trying to do his thing, but there's just something off, and he can feel it. Every time he tries doing something, he just starts, like, gravity starts getting heavier. He starts getting sweatier. Mm -hmm. He starts coughing. And there's just flies. There's and just a flies, lot of flies show flies up. Flies everywhere. They're all over the window, and then they're all over him. Yeah. And all you can hear is just the buzzing of the flies. It's just getting... getting not, like, not like 50 flies. We're talking, like, easily into the couple hundreds yeah, of flies. Yeah, there, there's a lot of flies in this movie. Yeah, because represent that's like the evil of the house and they start covering him. Because it's like the house itself is like a decomposed corpse, basically, of its, yeah. of, of, of its former self. Yeah, this isn't in the facts section, but I found out that uh, the cinematographer had like a deathly fear of insects and was just like, he, he didn't even want to like look at the flies surrounding everyone, so he would just like close his eyes and... <laughs> is that why it's shot so poorly? <laughs> Some of them... <laughs> He, he said he would close his eyes and it's hope he got a good shot. It's a, it's a pretty good scene. He actually. said he, he said he would uh, close his eyes and hope that like he didn't like do anything. But he was so disgusted by the flies that he didn't want to eat that much, and he was nauseous. So he lost like thirty pounds working on this movie. Oh my god! Because he didn't eat as much as he should have. Because the flies show back up. Yeah, they're all. It's, there's a, there's another, the they're in evil. another scene. The what? house is evil, so there's flies everywhere. Shit just keeps happening, and eventually, this is the one. This is one of the parts that actually got me. Is when the house just screams at him to get out screams at first father the, delaney first to get tell, out. For, for the door slowly opens you know basically saying hey could you please leave <laughs> but, <laughs> but he then, didn't it, take but, the fucking hint so so, so it, you know it just whispers get out you know it's that it's yeah. the, which is a trope in itself now yeah and then it just screams at him get out and, and that legit made me jump the first time i watched this yeah i just was like holy christ and he takes his time to leave yeah because he's an old man he's just like Okay, well, I guess I'll go. Anyway, he stumbles out of the house, gets to gets to his uh, car, and promptly vomits. But he's obviously greatly affected. Meanwhile, in the house, this ha the demon, the house just kicks the shit out of this poor guy for the, the rest of the movie. The, uh, in the house, James Brolin, George Lutz starts to go through his dark transformation from looking like a normal, happy white dad. To one that is uh, uh, cracked out and like really and recovered. just like an, a step away from just backhanding everybody in his path. Just a bunch of domestic violence oh, and dude, like, starts losing it. And he decides to take his uh, anger and energy out by doing one thing. And this is the most important part. Chopping firewood. Chopping firewood and not not just like enough. I think he chops like way like he, he could essentially make another Amityville house with all the firewood. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 
he builds he, another boathouse. Maybe that's what he was trying to do. He was like, well, I can't stay here, so we got to make another house real quick. Well, it's so I'll just make it out of the firewood. <laughs> it's because he keeps saying he's freezing in the house. Yeah, he, he says he, it's cold. Yeah, Margaret Kidder's like, well, it's not. It's not cold. It's like summertime. But he's like freezing. He's always wearing like sweaters and mm-hmm. sweatshirts and everything. He And looks pale. He looks sick for the, for the movie. Like, Good acting on his part and good makeup on their part. Like, yeah. They do make him look like he's becoming very sickly. Um, but honestly, I'm just like, you know what you need? You just need to get a haircut because he's got, he's just got this full head of hair and this giant beard. And there's a reason he, he, he's got that like later, but like, yeah, all I'm saying is just like, dude, you're so sweaty because you just need a haircut. You look like a Geico caveman. <laughs> he cracked out Bob Ross again. Oh, God. Don't leave Bob Ross out of this movie. Uh, Can you imagine if Bob Ross painted the Amityville house? This, things aren't so happy in there, but they can be happy outside. Let's draw some happy little windows. Let's paint some happy little windows. Never mind. George starts waking up at 3.15 a.m. like every night. Yeah. Every night he wakes up at 3.15 and... 3.14 significant- turning into 3.15. Yeah, yeah, the significance of that is that's when um, the previous... Murders, the murders were the committed. The murders were... Com- the the, mo- the sorry. murders. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the murders were committed by the previous guy who lived there. Yeah. And one thing that I was kind of laughing about at the beginning because of this is why did no one wake up? It's a weird thing actually about how in real life nobody woke up because they actually did toxicology on all the bodies and they're like, they weren't drugged. They just fucking didn't wake up while people were getting shot. They were all shot while they were in bed, in bed asleep. And it's like, it's not like, you know, they missed. It was like all clear, easy shots. So it's like, they weren't moving. They're asleep. So it's one of those weird uh, things. We're not quite sure about Uh, the dad, George, let's just start to slowly lose it. Things happen constantly. Uh, there's a missing check. There's money that goes missing. There's money that goes missing. It doesn't really uh, have point, anything to do with the later The house parts. just robs them. The house stole $1,500 <laughs> is what I'm understanding. But that feeds into something Stephen King said. Did you read this? Stephen King called this movie a parable on the anxieties of home ownership and financial ruin. Oh, that he might, said, yeah. yeah. Like, if you look at the movie from that point of view, it does kind of make sense because they, like... What do they mention? What does his friend mention? He's just like, you're going to be making payments till you're so old on this house. You made this huge financial decision. Just all of a sudden, what the house just steals the money for the wedding from them. Steals, you know? Yeah. And it's, which wedding is it? It's, is it the, it's, el- it's, the it's, eldest son? No, it's like Margot Kidder's brother. Oh, yeah. Like Kathy's brother. Who's just he's in that one scene. Like he's not important, but like. It's just so something else creepy can happen. Yeah, he has the $1,500 in his pocket, and he takes his coat off, sets it down, and then they go to leave. And then when he's, he, he, he can't find it, the, it's the, just the, gone the from his pocket. The, the house robbed them. But uh, the house just leaves the, the, the wad you can put in the cash in. Yeah. <laughs> like the little, uh, the little rubber, rubber band, band hides yeah. it under the couch and just to fuck with James Brolin, who, yeah. who goes back to look for it because like at the wedding, the caterer is just in his face about it. Yeah. Cause just James, like, no. James Brolin says he'll pay him and he I'm going to write you a, yeah. I'm going to write you a check. And the guy's like, I don't like checks. I want cash. And, he, and James Brolin's like, get the fuck out of my face before I kill you. <laughs> look at, look at how <laughs> cracked out I am right now. Do you yeah. want to talk to me? And honestly, if I was uh, that, the caterer, I would back off immediately. He did. He looks James Brolin's character looks cracked out like i wouldn't have approached him in the first place. i wouldn't even talk to him i would have invited this guy i actually would have assumed he was a homeless guy that snuck in (laughs) yeah yeah the caterer does back off because he just shakes that dude down he's just like get away from me get away i'm writing you a check and that's that um and then he goes back to the house to look for the money because he's so pissed off and uh, it's not there it's not there and he's just like where the hell is it but (laughs) it's such a funny scene because i'm like the house just robbed them. The house just robbed them. <laughs> Meanwhile, during the same time, they get back the the younger of the the children that uh, Margot Kidder's uh, children. Amy, kind of, Amy, the younger. Amy's a little brat, dude, and is talking to this imaginary friend that she calls Jody. Jody, 
And Jody, I want a spinoff of Jody. Jo- a spinoff Jody, show starring Jody. Jody. <laughs> Jody has decided to terrorize uh, just the most cartoonish-looking babysitter you'll ever see. Yeah, just like the braces with the glasses, with the retainer, with the retainer, and, with the, and everything. With the silly retainer. I was just like, yeah, you're for sure bullied. At yeah, school. Uh, she, <laughs> the 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 ghost says Jody has decided to terrorize the babysitter that is watching Amy while everyone else is at the wedding, where George is cracked out. Uh, by locking her in the closet, locks and, her in the closet, shuts the light off, just scares her to death. Yeah. Like, and then she can't. And Amy just sits there watching this happen. Yeah, I, I, I guess know, for a few hours. And we know Jody's <laughs> real because every now and then we just see the rocking chair in Amy's room just kind of rock back and forth on its own. Yeah. Oh, that's my friend Jody. Jody told me about the other little girl that used to live in this room. Yeah. <laughs> Jody told me she died, and Margot Kidder's just like. What else has Jody told you? Jody's told you a lot, <laughs> and she's like, "Jody told me not to." And Jody right there, told me not like, to open the door. Like, you're sleeping. You're sleeping on the floor tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm mad. This this is is like, yeah, I would be. I would be mad. Like, even if I was the parent, I'd be like, "You know how much I got to pay this babysitter now?" <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> and really, just things just escalate from there. Father Delaney tries to call the family. Wait, really again. quick. Wait, really quickly. And then, like, George just yells at the kids. And then he walks off and Amy's just like, Jody doesn't like George. And I was just like, George doesn't like you. George doesn't like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Things just tend to escalate from there. Nothing makes sense. It doesn't really make sense. Nothing um, adds up to anything. Uh, meanwhile, the priest has tried to call them back to get the pr- house blessed. To get <laughs> the house keeps, the block, house blocking, keeps the like, blocking the phone call and like playing like buzzing noises while he's trying to talk to them. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if it was pl- like flies buzzing? Yeah, noise? Yeah, flies buzzing noise. <laughs> Uh, it's it's just playing that. Um, Rod Stagger, Father Delaney, decides that the best thing to do is pray for the family in a large Catholic church with another priest. And him praying for the family very loudly and screaming causes a large chunk of plaster from one of the sculptures on the ceiling to fall and just nail him in the face, which is kind of a funny. Moment it is a really because not only not only is his line funny, but he he. This is much later in the movie, by the way. This movie's about two hours long, yeah. and it takes forever to get anywhere. Yeah, like, you, you feel like we're skipping a lot, but we're close to the end. But like honestly, it, it, nothing really happens for a lot of it. Just like small issues, and then eventually, just one thing at the end, and that's it. Yeah, but Rod Steiger, like he said, he's at the church, and he's like. What, he's praying he's, he's praying he's, for the family and he's saying stuff like oh god let them kind of like be be delivered let them do that and he's like calling out and like and really really seeing, yelling and he's seeing this like angel shake sh- like sculpture just crumble in front yeah. of him he's the only one who can see it yeah and he's just hamming it up in the scene like <laughs> like half of his dialogue he's like oh lord half of his oh, dialogue god, and the rest of the movie lord, is, yeah. yeah oh god and then finally the best part and this is fucked up it's funny the, the piece of plaster falls. He's like, oh, God. And oh, it falls every- right at the camera lens. And right. It, and, and it hits him right in the fucking face. And he just goes. <laughs> and, and, but he was in the middle of the prayer, so it could be good in the context of the prayer. But he goes, he goes, oh, God. Hits him in the face. He goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> just falls to the ground. <laughs> like King Arthur and Holy Grail. Yeah, they yeah. launched the cow over Jesus the Christ. <laughs> It's a really funny read. Yeah, and, and then so, this poor man, he's just blind. He's blinded that. and catatonic. And, and just catatonic. Doesn't talk to anyone. Again, has to be taken care of. Again, the house just kicks the shit out of this poor guy. Out and, of everyone. But what sucks is you could cut all of that out of the movie. You can cut all of Rod Steiger out of the movie. And the movie would still it be, would pretty, be, much, no different. be pretty much the he, same. It would be no different because he shares no scenes with the family. He never comes back after the piece of plaster hits him in the face. Yeah. It it's like there's no there is no actual ties to what's happening at the house. Uh, it's yeah. just like the the entity that's in the house just kind of like decides to fuck with him outside of the house. Yeah, it needed um it needed like a, another hobby if not fucking with the, yeah. <laughs> the people in the <laughs> they were like he, he the the entity wanted to do some like uh, outsourcing type it took shit it personally on him. It was dude. very angry that he showed up uh, and not only decided to ruin this family's life, but also said, just ruin his. I need to go ruin this other guy's life uh, as well. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so the Amityville horror, it's, it, is it worth a watch because it's a, cl- because it's considered like a classic horror film? Sure. Sure. You, you might get something out of it, but ultimately 
it's in the realm of the satanic panic era. So mm -hmm. it's like same thing sponsored it's, uh, that that brought up brought around by the exorcist and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. it's kind of like a, a snapshot of like American culture, American fears. Yeah. Just like most horror movies are, but you know, it's definitely of its era. And uh, I, I would recommend watching it at least once. And then maybe moving on to one of like the It's a good sequels. Halloween movie, probably. Yeah, you know, yeah. just just check it out if it's on TV. But it's yeah. the I soundtrack is at least a bunch of creepy kids singing. The La -la. score, the score <laughs> is really good. Yeah, the score is really good. We're nominated for an Oscar too. Yeah, by uh, how do you say his name? La Lalo Schifrin. I think so. Yeah, Claudio Schifrin. I believe yeah. but he went like by uh, Lalo Schifrin. Yeah. Um, which is it's a fun score. I do like it because it's it's kind of starts out like it's a cute little lullaby, but then like the strings come in and just yeah. kind of makes it sound like, oh, there's something sinister going on Super here. Spooky. Yeah. Never, maybe you should tell those kids to stop singing. <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop singing that song. <laughs> you want to move? You want to move on to the facts section? I do. All right. I do. I want to see what you drudge it up from this movie. Of course. I'll give the uh, intro as always. The facts about the movie are real facts that I have written down for Nick, who's never seen them before. But uh, I take my own little spin on them. And uh, again, these are all real facts. These are all real, just with some, uh, some other stuff included. Excellent. All right. Shall I start? Go ahead. All right. Here are our facts section for the Amityville Horror. Fact number one. The Amityville Horror was released on August 3rd, 1979 to a $7.8 million opening weekend. It earned a total of $86.4 million while in theaters, placing it at number 212 on the inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. Some of its competition in the late summer of 1979 included Alien, starring our girl Sigourney Weaver, Life of Brian, starring the Judean People's Front, <laughs> fuck off, <laughs> and some movie for nerds called Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope which re-released back in theaters, oh, must have been really popular, and still earned almost $7 million its first weekend. Is there an Amityville in space? I, uh, bet, I bet there is. It might be. <laughs> uh, the Amityville Horror was the number two highest grossing movie of 1979, uh, coming behind uh, Kramer versus Kramer. Uh, that was number one. Uh, did you know, believe it or not, Alien was number nine? Alien was number nine in nineteen. How 19th. much did Alien make? Uh, not, I didn't. I didn't take notes on that, but uh, it was number nine on the on the numbers box office list for seventy nine. It still made the top ten. Yeah, it made the top ten, but it's just number nine. Uh, and I will tell you that the Amity, the the Amityville Horror is also on the all time uh, horror movie inflation adjusted box office list. It ranks number thirty eight. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. It was uh, a hit. It was it a was, huge hit. It was. Uh, do you want to guess what the number one movie? on the all-time domestic box office list is, and actually the international one. Uh, for too. horror? For horror. Isn't it It? It is It. it yeah, is, it yeah. Is the 2017 It. It is, that is the number one movie for horror, and I it. doubt it will stand. I, I doubt it will be dethroned anytime soon. It's, it's like a wide margin. What's the next big horror movie coming out? Um, oh, what's that one I want to do? What's that one I wanted to see? Uh, the Talk to Me? Oh yeah, that one looks really good. The A twenty four one. The A twenty four one with the, hand, the the dead witch hand or something like that. Yeah, um, it talked to me is probably out by now. Just yeah. so you know, like, oh, yeah. so let us I'm know. If it's good. Let uh, us know if it's any good. We'll be going to see it for sure when it's <laughs> it's there. But uh, yeah, and and Craven the Hunter. Oh nope. <laughs> uh, we're gonna skip on. Uh, that's uh, that. You wanna fact number two? Actor James Brolin, who played George Lutz, is the father to actor Josh Brolin, notable for playing Brand Walsh in The Goonies and almost nothing else. Josh Brolin would go on to star as Cable in Deadpool 2 alongside actor Ryan Reynolds, who played the title character. Coincidentally, Ryan Reynolds also played the character of George Lutz, the same character James Brolin played, in the 2005 remake of the Amityville Horror. What does this connection make Josh Brolin and Ryan Reynolds? Absolutely nothing! Absolutely nothing. <laughs> that's, just, that's just a fact. Uh, I, I, told, I, told, I told my girlfriend, I was watching this, and I, I pointed James Brolin out, and I said, do you know who he is? And she's like, no. That's James Brolin. He's the father of Josh Brolin. She's like, who's Josh Brolin? <laughs> I was like, Thanos. And she's like, well, of course I don't recognize him. He's not purple. What's Josh Brolin's worst movie? His worst movie? Mm -hmm. uh, Jonah Hex. I was going to say uh, that remake of Old Boy. I was oh, oh, Isn't he the bad guy in Into the Blue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do got... Jonah Hex probably his worst movie, but Jonah Hex is fun. Yeah. Jonah Hex is actually a fun Halloween movie if you watch it. He's actually then. really good in The Goonies as well. Actually, I love Brand in The Goonies. 
I'm gonna hit you so. What does he say? I'm gonna hit you so hard. You. <laughs> I forget. They tie exactly. him to the chair. Yeah, yeah. Cut this part out. I forget what he says. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen the Goonies. So they like, long. tie him to the chair with his workout equipment. Yeah, with yeah. his um, like, with his stretcher. Yeah, with his stretcher with like the <laughs> springs in it. I was like, that's gonna hurt if that snaps. That's gonna pinch all of his skin together. Well, he got out of it somehow. Yeah, and he gets run off the road by the bully. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just straight run off the road. He survives though. Yeah. Fact number three. Although depicted in the film to be a dark, cold, dungeon-like room with a portal to hell in it, the real basement in the Amityville house was actually a fully furnished rec room at the time the story takes place in real life. I feel like this could have worked out because the family could have challenged the demon to a game of Uno or whatever for control of the house, just like in Bill and Ted 2. <laughs> the demon won't know what hit it when you start stacking plus twos on that spooky bitch. I, I just think it's funny that they're like they're like oh it's got to be spooky and it's like it's like it's actually very pleasant down here. You sunk my battleship. It's um, it, yeah, it's like it's harder to be scared in the dun- in the in the in the, uh, in the uh, basement if if it's not like dungeon like and it's just like a like a place where people hang out. Easy to beat. No, well, then you, this thing's pretty ruthless. This thing's pretty ruthless. It starts pulling like uh, plus fours out of its ass. It just like <laughs> it starts stagger. cheating. It's cheating. <laughs> it's cheating. <laughs> Challenge it to a game of Jenga. It just makes the Jenga tower even taller. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like all in Bill and Ted, something, stuff like that. That's six out of seven. Plus seven. Because they keep beating him. Six out of seven, he keeps losing. Fact number four. The Amityville house resides at 112 Ocean Avenue, Amityville, Long Island, New York. But if you type the address into Google Maps, the house is blurred out in street view. Google has not provided a reason as to why they did this, but most speculate it is to protect the privacy of the house's current residents. However, in 2018, Google removed the rule of don't be evil from its code of conduct. So now I think that they might be up to something more sinister. What are they doing? I, did you hear that? They've been following me ever since I looked up the house. They're listening now. They're in the walls. They're in the goddamn walls. Uh, I'm not sure why it's blurred out in street view, but I, I, Google did remove don't be evil from their code of conduct. So I was like Amityville house plus the don't be evil removal. Uh, I think they're up to something there. They got to be up to something. <laughs> Amityville takes over Google. Oh, my God. The Amity, the Amityville search engine. The Am- <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say my my joke was going to be like chill. It was going to be like, oh, it just spams you pictures of pigs. Get it? Oh, because Jody's supposed to be a pig. Jody's a pig. If yeah. you don't know that, if you don't know this, if you're watching the Amityville horror, you think uh, if you know the remake and you look out for Jody, Jody is a ghost of a girl who died in the house. But if you watch the original movie, Jody is just a pig. She's a pig. She's the ghost. She's the ghost. She's the ghost pig. She, I, I, I don't know. She's supposed to be a demon. I'm not really sure. She, she's a pig, though. That's the only other part of the movie that legit got me is when Mario Kidder looks out the window and sees the eyes looking back at her. Yeah. That scared the shit out of me the first time I saw that. I was legit. I legit paused the movie and had to walk around. It, it is actually, it's actually a true thing. Uh, with the director tried to get her because she was he wasn't getting the reaction he wanted from her seeing the eyes because it was just two lights. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he not like Suspiria, you know, and they do that kind of similar thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so he actually put like a giant like stuffed pig out there one time to scare her. And she fucking started laughing. <laughs> she, was like, she was like, oh, I just started laughing. And he was like, fucking cut. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Didn't scare her at all. So he summoned the demon of an actual ghost pig to ghost scare her. Ghost pig to scare her, yeah. But yeah, Jody, if you don't know that, if you can like impress your friends at a party one day and you ask them, hey, what is Jody in the original Amityville Horror? And they go like, what oh, the fuck? Jody's leave. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> That's what they're going to say. Whatever. I don't get invited to parties, so that's why I'm saying this. Sure, shall we? Uh, last one's the what a story, Mark. So what happens with this is Nathan comes up with a fact about the making of the movie that is generally insane, and then I or read the it, most insane one, and then I read it and I react. So and we, rate it out of one, rate it out of one to five marks. One to five. Ha 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 ha. What a story, Mark. Okay, so the what a story, Mark, for the Amityville Horror. Both James Brolin and Margot Kidder became friends with the real life George Lutz and his kids during the production process of the movie. After spending numerous hours with family, bonding, getting to know them, making memories, and hearing their stories firsthand, they both concluded that these motherfuckers were clearly lying about the whole thing. <laughs> it's true. It, that's actually true. James Brolin and Margot Kidder both said after production, they were like, 
I feel like that's all made they're, up. They're full they of shit. They're lying. They lied about the whole thing. It, there's nothing in the house. Who would have thought the most successful or the most the, the horror franchise with the most amount of sequels is based off lies. A bunch of bullshit. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> they, they said that it wasn't real and they, they believed it wasn't like real. But I mean, there was also like a huge issue with um, different people suing the guy that wrote the book and the Let's family that were involved in the DeFeo thing and being like, this is bullshit and everything. Um, so, you know, there was like a, a fair amount of. Uh, controversy surrounding it. Uh, the Lutz family, they only had troubles that got worse. Uh, they, the mom and the, the parents separated and there was like a whole bunch of issues. And I think the mom died fairly early and then the dad died a couple of years later after that. So, mm. you know, did, did all their stress and trauma, if it was ever real, even though I don't think it was, uh, was like that. But yeah, James Brolin and Margot Kidder both went on record saying, I don't believe anything these people said. <laughs> <laughs> So. I rate that. Oh, it's a good. Got, got a good laugh on me. I rate that three. Yeah, three, three out of five. Three, marks. three mocks. So we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah. So there's a lot of really weird Amityville sequels that are actually direct sequels to the Amityville horror, and then there's also weird knockoffs, which is people take the story of the Amityville and just make it their own and make it kind of stupid, and then slap the Amityville name on it. So it's kind of just. I don't know if it's open to public domain or or anything. So there's absolutely ridiculous, shitty B horror. Uh, no, I wouldn't even say B horror. These are D D tier horror uh, movies. Uh, <laughs> a couple of them were actually produced by and made by uh, a guy I used to watch on YouTube, which is actually where I got a lot of the '80s movies I loved. I don't know if you ever. He used. He, I think his YouTube name is like Cool Dude or something. Okay. But his real name is Sean C. Phillips. And uh, I've been following him ever since I was in high school, learning about movies and stuff. Uh, he has a really good collection of horror movies. He had like an entire basement that was just wall to wall horror movies, oh, DVDs, nice. and he would go through like everyone. He's like, like his Nick, Nick Frost's closet. And yeah, Hot Fuzz, just yeah, yeah. Movies. <laughs> he had he had that, but that's I think his video is where I learned about Phantom of the Mall the first time as well, oh, or something like that. Hell so yeah. so that and it's where I learned about Return of the Living Dead for the first time was one of his videos and stuff. So. Uh, he has made some of these. And so what we're going to do is I am going to write a read a real uh, Amityville IMDb summary of a real shitty Amityville sequel or horror movie or knockoff. And then I'm also going to read one that I've made up. I made it up completely on the spot yesterday. And I'm going to ask Nick which one uh, is real, which one's not. And we'll have a quick discussion about the real one uh, All right. after because I've watched a little bit of the clips of surrounding it. Okay. Possibility Amityville sequel number one. A mysterious, deadly illness spreads through the town of Amityville, all linked to the water that the infamous murder house stands on. It will take the combined efforts of all previous murder house survivors to solve the mystery and finally put this evil to bed. Okay. That's possibility number one. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to give you the, the titles, okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to give you the possibility. Number two. Now remember, one of these is made up. Number two. Leprechaun, Jason, and Pinhead have all gone to space, and now a horror, another horror legend joins them. Investigator Father Piena fights against the spirits of Amityville as the murder house is thrust into space. Which one do you think I made up, and which one do you think is real? I'm going to go with the poison water. I think you made that one up. That is correct. I did make really? that one up. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they do go to space. They, so Amityville goes to space. And I, even though it, it, the, the tagline on, on the, this is that Leprechaun, Jason, and Pinhead have all gone to space and now another horror legend joins them, period. But then it's like a separate thing. But it's like kind of like a, like a catchy tagline being like Amityville in space, just like Jason X. I'm not going to lie. That makes it sound like they're all in it together. Yeah, yeah, I know. Maybe I should have taken that out. But yes, the, uh, the one that I made up was about this mysterious deadly illness. That is not real. That, uh, could, Amity- be, that could be real. Amityville in space. <laughs> Amityville in space is a, I, I did not watch this full movie. I just watched the trailer and clips of it. It is, uh, I forget who directed it. I'll have to look it up. But um, it exists. It's free on Tubi. You can watch it. Paranormal investigator, who's also a priest, is in space uh, in the year in in like the twenty second or twenty third century, while like aliens are trying to like extract the uh, the the evil from the house. While the evil, well, the house is also pissed off that it's in space. It's not happy. It's up there, by the way. <laughs> but that is a that is a real that is a real Amityville sequel. Is Amityville in space? What would you call the water one? 
uh, what would I call the water one? Yeah, what would your title for that? Uh, uh, Amityville Pandemic or something like that. Oh, that might hell be yeah. Amityville 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Amityville COVID, uh, something like that. Yeah. So I made that one up, but, uh, I thought, you know, it would, I would get something that's kind of close. I'm basically trying to either be, you're going to have to guess it'll kind of vary on each one because sometimes I'm going just as insane as the one that's real because it's so stupid that I'm just going to go steer hard the other way, or I'm doing something that could be possibility close to the original. <laughs> so you're going to have to kind of guess cause I'll vary it up. Cause is this the only one you got for me or uh, today? Today. today yeah. Okay. Yeah, We'll do, we'll do a new one each, uh, each, uh, okay. Each one. Well, I'm but glad I, I'm glad I guessed it that. So you're, so you're one, you're one, they're going to be four Amityville episodes. So you're one out of four right now. You got a 25%. Good job. Hey, good job. Happy, uh, how we could do that. So what would you rate this movie? This is the part of the episode where we generally rate the movie. Rate the movie? From um, one out of a hundred. Knowing everything with Amityville and, and what it is, it's boring, but it has, it has decent effects and it has a lot, you know, it has like its tropes and it, you know, they really did, you know, have decent acting and stuff like that. I'm going to give this a, I'm going to give this like a 54. 54 54 54 for me out of 100 what about I, you i i the first time i watched it i i enjoyed it more watching it again for this i didn't enjoy it that much even the things that i thought were scary just weren't very scary it was just like this mm-hmm. movie this movie kind of blows honestly <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and give it like a 43 40 <laughs> jay damn i'm more forgiving with it than you are yeah, this yeah. time that's a that's funny. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was legitimately funny. <laughs> oh, my God. So what, what is I that? Say? What is that average to? 43 plus 54 uh, divided by two. There's a 48.5. So this is below a 50 uh, for both of us. I think we can we can agree. Just not everything. Of, not everything that's considered a classic is good. No, okay? just no, yeah. it's it's not. It's uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, that's it. Should we uh, move on to our final part of the podcast? Yes. Yes, we shall. All right. What do you got for me? This is the will I let Nick in the club part. Um, As explained, I'm a hypothetical bouncer outside a hypothetical club, and I'll let Nick in if he can name a movie that kind of falls into the trivia I ask him. So he can get in the club, but he's got to guess right. The one I wanted to ask you today is this. Can you name me a movie that has a pig in it? Babe. Fuck, that's a good one. <laughs> Charlotte's Web. Oh my god, uh, just like the pig in the in the uh, Jody. Is you know there? A, it, oh no, I'm thinking of Black Sheep. No, I was like, isn't there one with killer pigs? Oh no, no it's killer sheep. It's killer sheep. <laughs> you know what? Go ahead. I'll let you into the club today. Yeah! Let me open the door for you, you and and babe. Ba, what does he say? Ba moom bra moom ba or something like that. That'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. Uh, by Arthur. What is it? Uh, not Arthur Miller. Is it Arthur? George Miller. George Miller. Arthur who, Miller. Arthur Miller who wrote Death of a Salesman. Uh, George yeah, Miller. Death of a Salesman. Oh, babe is babe, where it's babe, at. Babe. Who also wrote... That's uh, his magnum opus. Matt, who uh, wrote, did Mad Max Fury Road. And Happy Feet. And Happy Feet. That'll do it for us today. Thank you for listening to the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to follow us, rate us, and subscribe to us on wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, wherever we're present. And be sure to tell a friend about the podcast where we say we're going to talk about the movie, and then we kind of talk about a movie. We talk about the movie in the same way the movie got to the final plot. A very slow burn. Yeah. All right. Anyway, happy Halloween, everyone. See you. Watch Amityville in space instead. (laughs) See you next time. Bye.